Hey guys, I'm so excited about this video today because I'm going to be going into different techniques to grow and of course make money off of TikTok. I made thousands of dollars and grown two different accounts on TikTok to become profitable and build relationships with my customers and provide a lot of value. So I'm really excited. I think that a lot of these different things are universal and it works for any account. I really believe that anyone has the potential to grow and of course make money on TikTok. So here's what I think really makes the difference. going to go ahead and dive into TikTok 101 with me, Kiera. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my little camera person over here because I think it can be a little bit distracting. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that out. I'm so excited. Here we go. Um, TikTok is, I think, the biggest tool that you should be using for your business right now. And a little bit about me, I built two different profitable, two different profitable vans by, brands by using 100% organic traffic from social media. So in the process of running my own businesses, I've learned how to make social media work the most for me, and now I'm sharing what I've learned, especially with TikTok. So why TikTok? TikTok is ranking in at the number one social media platform, and it's only growing. No wonder why every single platform is trying to launch their own version of it right now. Literally, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram, and Snapchat, like everyone is trying to emulate and copy what TikTok's doing because it is so effective. And here's a couple of stats that will definitely stand out to you. So TikTok right now, if you post something on TikTok, it will live on TikTok and for 80 days or longer. So you post it and it can get traffic, like brand new traffic for 80 days. Whereas Instagram, it's max 48 hours. But that's like for a viral, somewhat viral video. Most, especially for smaller brands, is it more like two to three hours that it actually shows on the Explore feed and can get new views from outside of their organic followers. For TikTok, you can, people, like the average user spends 81 minutes with the sound on per session, which is insane versus Instagram, which is three to four minutes with the sound off. Like it's incredible the potential reach you have. Go where the eyes are, go where your clients are, work smarter, right? And on Instagram, they really push perfectionism. They push that Instagram modeled, very staged um, kind of look. And that's what you feel like you have to provide. Of course, some people, you know, are able to break out of that and still be successful. So it's not a must, but I think that pressure that you can kind of feel is stressful. It takes a lot more time to make very staged aesthetic photos versus TikTok, which is authentic. You can make a video on the toilet and get tons of views and people wouldn't care. People want authentic people. Like it's hard to fake things in a video. Like they just want you to be you. That is why I believe TikTok is so different and so huge. So it's consumed differently. So on Instagram, you get on Instagram and you, and you scroll your follow page. So you are scrolling people that you follow. And the only way you would see a different person's content that you're not following is because one of your friends shared it. Sometimes you'll see it on the explore feed, but when was the last time you really explored the explore feed? It, it's not why you go on Instagram. You go on Instagram to see who you follow. Whereas TikTok, you have these two options. When you follow someone, you can scroll your following feed to only see videos from people you follow. But 95% of people only follow the For You page. They only get on to scroll the For You page, which is literally could be anything. They are literally scrolling to see brand new content. You don't go on TikTok to really connect with people that you already know. You are there to be entertained, to learn, and of course, connect with brand new accounts. So you have the potential to show up in front of anybody. And the TikTok algorithm is incredibly intelligent. So they know who to show your content to. They are not going to be showing your content to people that are not interested. They are using the algorithm to predict who will connect with your content. So here's the content summary that we're going to be going over. This is going to be a detailed, pretty detailed video. Um, I want to be really thorough. I come from a long line of educators. My dad literally writes math textbooks and has written it like over 10 of them. So I think it's just my way. I think it's <laughs> somewhat hereditary. So here's what we're going to be going into is content. So we're going to go in to take the guessing game out of what kind of content you should be creating. 
Step two, we're going to be doing strategy. Stop wondering how to get the most out of TikTok with my strategy pillars. Three, implementation. Make your life easier with tried and true tips for TikTok implementation. So stop guessing about that. And results, understand the benefits of TikTok and what it could actually mean for you. So part one, content. The golden rule is serve your niche. If you're posting videos all over the place without one clear person slash niche in mind, then it is going to be much harder for you to gain followers because people will not understand and not resonate with what you're posting. People are not, you're not going to keep getting the same amount of people. You want to get the people that are actually interested in whatever your product or service is over and over and over again. There's four main videos kind of content that are being posted. So trends, educational, personal, and entertaining. So let's jump into trends. The best way to understand what trends are is to consume TikTok. If you are not using TikTok as a viewer slash consumer, now is the time to get on. Trends are typically a sound that you do a specific action to. These are the ones that are being widely used across the platform by many users. Trends are trending. They have a high reachability and a good chance of going viral. People are tracking those sounds and watching what other people are doing on these sounds specific. And you can also, pretty much every trend can be recycled for whatever your niche is. Like, it doesn't matter your niche. You can usually, like, like um, what's the word I'm looking for? You can usually, all, like, adopt the trend to be whatever your clients would resonate with. And there's a couple ways to find trends. So one is just observation. If you are scrolling TikTok as you should be, you will see trends like certain sounds or actions appearing over and over again as it is trending. Um, another one is Trend Talk, which is an app. It is paid and it will notify you. You can have push notifications on as well and it will show you sounds that are on the uptick um, and sounds that are going down, sounds that are trending now, and it will push notification you as it rises on the trending to have you do it right when it's trending. Um, my favorite way is to follow Way Wild. I really appreciate her videos. She tells you like her entire feed is just telling you different trends to hop on. And so I have trend talk, but I typically only do what she tells me. And it's been really successful. I mean, as well as observation. And then there's also other people outside of Wave Wild that do the same thing. And so there are a couple others that I will follow on that. There are lots of ways to stay up on top, on top of the trends. And so just again, think about how it can apply to your niche and run with it. Educational content. Teaching something about your niche is a great way to provide value and establish yourself as an industry expert or authority figure. These videos promote saves, shares, and followers because people want to remember the information. If you are teaching something, they want to be able to go back to it so they're going to save it and so they can remember it. Personal content. If you were all business, you will miss out on a chance to let people get to know you. When people feel like they know you, they trust you. And this is how you develop a brand instead of just a business. So my recommendation is 80% business, 20% personal. People will start to feel that connection with you. And when people feel connection to you, they will consume whatever content you put out, no matter what it is. There's a couple of ways to do personal, and I think a lot of people struggle with how to do personal. So here's a couple ideas. Um, this is one that I do frequently, which is a day in the life. I just take a few second videos of different things I'm doing throughout my day, and then I do a voiceover of, of, as a recap. And people actually really resonate with these videos, and it's very entertaining. I like to compare it to this is why we like like lifestyle um shows like Keeping Up with the Kardashians, people are innately interested in other human nature. People find that interesting. Think about like true, true crime. Like people are so interested in what other people are doing. And so if you think you are boring, I promise you that there are people out there that don't think you're boring at all. Like whatever you're doing, people will find interesting and you'd be surprised on that. Um, another video is your why. Why are you doing what you do? What is your origin story? What brought you to what you're doing right now? Like people will connect with that and resonate with that. Pain points. Think about the pain points that your ideal customer has and make and show how that same pain point has affected or affects your personal life right now. Also, story time. This is a very common trend um, or activity on TikTok. 
So it's basically, as it says, you tell a story about your life. It does not have to necessarily relate to your niche because this is personal, but it is great if it does have people, again, you're just trying to pull back the curtain and show like you're a real person just like them. The entertaining content, this is different than trends. This is original and niche specific and a good way to compare this to is like somewhat of uh, it could be dancing and then doing text over it. it could be you pointing to text it's just something to break up your feed instead of you just talking at the camera here's a couple examples of what that could look like so for boutique you could do a video of what i would wear to a taylor swift concert or what i would wear to a farmhouse wedding like anything like that. It's a very entertaining, a different angle, but it's not a trend. Uh, service providers. It could be a skit or something funny that has happened in your niche. And when I say skit, it's not like necessarily full-blown acting. It's just like you having a pretend conversation. E-commerce. What I would buy for my best friend's baby shower. Something like that. Whatever your niche is. Something like that. And I realized I put the wrong buy in here, so don't have to point that out in the comments. I mean, you can if you want to. Go for it. But Anyways, so we're jumping into part two. Lead magnet, something of value. So this, and let me backtrack a little bit. This is a strategy to grow your TikTok. If you don't have a strategy and you're posting just to post, you are missing out on opportunities to maximize your reach and your growth. This is something that I personally do. This is how I've made thousands of dollars on TikTok. And this is how pretty much everyone that is profitable on TikTok follows a strategy. This is very recycled strategy because it is so effective. So Lee Magnet, this is something of value for free. It can be a coupon code, especially for um, things that are e-commerce. That's really effective, like 20% off your first purchase, et cetera. Q, um, a free guide, which is what I do. So whatever your niche is, here's a free guide to do something. It's very high level, something that will get people interested and show that you have knowledge and whatever it is. Uh, another option is a free course, like a free mini course that leads them to buy whatever your main offer is. This is something I actually just did, uh, opted into somebody that had a free course and I did their strategy funnel and it was fantastic model. So if that works for your niche, it's definitely a great option. After your lead magnet, so they want whatever this is, right? You make it so they want this. That's what your feed is about. They go to the opt-in page, which can be done on any email provider. Pick my, I'm not sorry, pick my email, Chimp, Flowdesk, Infusionsoft, Constant Contact, whatever. It works with anything. So they'll land on a page that will collect their email and our phone number in exchange for the freebie. So they'll put in their name and email in order to download the lead magnet. I highly recommend collecting both if possible, and most common is email, but phone number converts so much better. So if you have to pick one, I think a phone number funnel is really, really effective. But email campaign is what I do, and I will be switching to a phone number one soon because it is so much more effective. But after they opt in, it's going to go into an email campaign. So you're going to email them whatever that file is, and this is all going to be automated, so you don't have to think about it once you set it up. And it's going to have a five-part email series, which I can go into in a different video of what that should look like. And then, of course, it's going to go, eventually, the email campaign will lead them to your final pitch with a scarcity tactic of, like, this coupon code expires at midnight, um, this special pricing, you know, is going away tonight, etc. I only have so many spots, there's only so many left, etc. It's something that gives them the urgency to purchase. Call to action, call to action, call to action. You need to be doing this. This is the biggest thing. When I see people that are having a lot of views and having a lot of followers and not getting a lot of sales, this is usually the biggest thing that I see that they're missing. So call to action is telling them to do something. That's all you have to do. Tell your following and the people watching your videos what you want them to do. So there's four different places that I recommend putting it. I recommend putting it in all four where it's relevant. So the video ending, you'll see this in a lot of my own personal videos. You teach whatever it is. And then at the end, you say like and follow for more content like this, follow for more tips like this, follow for more ideas like this, etc. You tell them exactly why they should follow you and give them that call to action. Next is the actual caption. This is something that's not as common. I do once in a while, but it is a great opportunity. I like to put, I usually like to put all my hashtags and maximize that space for my hashtags, but this is somewhere you can put, hey, do this and link in my bio to click this, whatever, to get this one thing. 
Another thing is in your TikTok bio, you absolutely need this. You have very limited characters there. I think it's like 30 characters, maybe less. So in your actual bio, click, have a call to action that's like, click the link to download whatever your freebie is or click the link to get 20% off, whatever it is. And then in the comments, so you make your video and then you put the first comment, which is, hey, download this in my, by the way, download this freebie in LinkedIn, my bio. And I usually pin that to the top. So I will stay at the top, even if I get other comments. So let's schedule these out. That's a lot of kind of videos to be making, right? And this is the bare minimum of your TikTok posting that I recommend. Again, if this seems overwhelming to you, then do not stress. Do what you can. Your mental health will always be more important than TikTok. Like that is the number one thing that I wanted to remember is mental health. So I do want you to note though, the more you post, the more you grow. That's just fundamentals. The more you put in, the more you get out. So do keep that in mind. Mental health, again, first. But the more you post, the more you grow. So do understand that there's a balance and you need to balance those two. So the bare minimum is four posts a week. And you do one trend, one entertaining, one personal, one educational a week. That's the bare minimum. The maximum, of course, is post as many videos as possible every day. I will do, you know, usually I try to do three videos minimum a day. I'll do, you know, up to six, seven, eight videos sometimes, which is pretty rare for me. I'll typically be like three to five. And that obviously has been very effective. Oh, I will say, though, one of my other, my first TikTok account that I started, I only posted one a day, and I grew a lot. The difference with that one is that I only did entertaining and trend content. And because of that, because I didn't add these ones, I got, I didn't get many sales. So that's how important this one is. And once I started doing this formula, everything changed. That's when I took off. Hooks. A hook is the first two seconds, and this is where people decide whether they stay or scroll. So use a strong hook to grab attention. Things like, have you heard? Three reasons to, blah, blah, blah. No one is talking about this, which is actually one of the best ones. Did you know? Blah, 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 right? So these are some examples, and I, I'm going to put together a download for you of different hooks that I found really effective as well. So I'll link that below. If you have a hard time coming up with the ideas, here's a few things to try because this is the biggest complaint I hear is I don't have ideas. So number one, TikTok, scroll, see what your competitors are doing. Go on there. For example, I'm an Etsy coach, so I'll go on there and look at hashtag Etsy coach. I'm going to see what my competitors are doing. I'm going to see how those videos are doing. If they have a video that did really well, then I know that's something that I should be talking about too. I'm not going to copy it, but I'm going to take the concept. Pinterest. Search your niche on Pinterest and snag topics and hooks from the top pins. So I'll go on Pinterest, I'll type in Etsy coach, and I'll look at the pins that are performing the best and take those titles as ideas of what I should be using for a hook and topic. Another option is Answer the Public, which is a free website, and it will show you the most commonly answered and asked questions in your niche. That's a great resource. Let's jump into implementation here at part three. There's some helpful apps that are not required, but they make my life a lot easier. So you can film every single video in TikTok. That is absolutely an option, but I find TikTok to be very resolu low resolution, and I just don't like how I'm so limited on, comp on uh, composition. So these are the things I use. I use InShot for adding graphics and GIFs to my videos, which I think help keep people engaged. And then I use Splice for adding commercial use music and voiceovers. I make every single video in Splice. This is your bio. We need to optimize this. This is how we're going to keep people engaged and tell people what we're all about at a glance. So there's two different things. This is what you want to be known for, which is the name field. I want to be known as Etsy seller support or Etsy seller coach, and I'm going to put that there. Um, this is my username. The name does not change the username. This is searchable though. This is also searchable, but this is going to be huge for your account. Connect your Instagram account. You can get free follows just by connecting it. Add your opt-in link. This is huge. This is how you are going to get people onto your website. 
and then up here, like I told you, is a brief, a brief description of what you do and a reason to click the link. If you have the playlist option, which most people don't, especially for new uh, accounts, you can also use these titles to increase your SEO. Here's how to use a sound on TikTok, because if you were new, this might feel a little daunting. So when you're on a video, and this is uh, Brand Boss Media Management. I absolutely love her. She also does trend spotting. Definitely give her a follow. I've worked with her personally as well. So click the little sound on the video, on any video. And this is going to pop up. You can add it to favorites. So if you're not going to use it right that second, add it to favorites. If you're going to use it right then, click use this sound and it's going to pop up ready for you to film with the sound preloaded. Here's how to reply with a video. And this is going to be a huge asset to your account. Massive, massive. So this helps you get your video count up instead of trying to think of videos to make. People are asking you specific questions and you can easily just answer these right off the bat. So here you go. What hashtags would you add in your idea pin? So I reply, hit reply. It's going to pop up with this page. You're going to click the video. This is going to pop up. You can, This will pop your, uh, whatever the question was, will pop up right here. You can move this when you're done filming. So don't be too overwhelmed or bugged by wherever that lands up. And then you're just going to record. And for these videos, I always record it in TikTok. You don't have much of an option. You can upload, but I just personally think it's so much easier just to do that. So for the reply videos, I just film in TikTok. Oh, I will know. Let's go back for a second. You need to select how long your video is going to be. I always put it at max, so I'm not limited. Uh, if you are a brand new account, you may not have the three minute option. So just do 60 if that's their highest. Here's how to add music. So you'll click sounds going to pop up with this screen. You can click on your favorites right here to see the ones that you favorited, or you can click more. You can also click favorites right here, or you can click discover to go through what they have. You're going to be on a business account, so TikTok will only suggest the commercial use sounds for you built into TikTok. It's very annoying. You can use the favorites to kind of bypass that though. After that, you can adjust the volume. So here you'll see the volume button. And this is where you can adjust the original sound and the added sound. Let's talk about the creator fund because you can't be on TikTok and also not know what the creator fund is. So you have to have at least 10,000 followers. You get one cent per thousand views and there's a monthly cash out. You can see here, I make very little off the creator fund. If you were getting millions of reviews, this can be absolutely very lucrative. So it's something that is worth being on. There is a superstition that if you're on the creator fund, TikTok won't give you as many views because they don't want to pay out. I haven't found that to be true, but it is worth noting that that is somewhat of a superstition. Let's go into part four. This is our final section, and this is the results, results that are possible for you. Consistency pays off. So TikTok can be a huge asset to your marketing efforts with consistency. You can see here my own personal Google Analytics. So look how substantial of a difference this is. I, if this doesn't blow your mind, I don't know why will. All right, let's go into how insane the, the longevity of your video is. I posted this video May 13th of this year. Okay, May 13th. This is two days ago as of this video's play as uh, filmed. So that is months later. I'm still getting brand new comments. I get comments on this video all the time still. And this is just the comments, not including the likes, not including the shares that I am still getting. You will not see this reach on Instagram. You just won't. This is stuff that's good to know. Quick little report, uh, little tips. So reports. Anyone can report your video for any reason. And when this happens, you'll get a notification that it's been reported. They'll uh, temporarily take your video down. And it is, it's not terribly common. If you get a viral video, some people get jealous, in my opinion, and will start reporting your video just out of pure vengeance or jealousy. So just take note of that. But uh, there's a chance, obviously, TikTok will review your video. If it gets taken down, it gets taken down. You can try to repost it. It might get taken down again. 
that's just part of it. Or they'll come back and be like, oh, it, it improved. We approve it. We realize there's nothing wrong with it. And honestly, the, the TikTok reports are pretty ridiculous. They will take it down, like, for whatever reason. It's, it's pretty dumb. But again, it's not terribly common. Spam. This is the bane of my existence. It's so annoying. This will happen. So spammers will come and spam your comments, telling other people to check out a different account. Like, they'll be like, come check out this account. And they'll do, like, 40 comments at a time, 15 comments, 10 comments, 3 comments. And they will just explode your comments with a bunch of spam. It is so annoying. The one thing you need to know is that if you block the account, if you just go block the account, it doesn't delete the comments. So delete all of the comments and then block them. Haters, they suck. They friggin' suck. The more views your video gets, the more haters that come out of their dark hater holes to leave nasty and sensitive comments. It, the more views, the more eyes on it, the more chance of seeing, of haters seeing it. It is hard, especially like me, I'm pretty emotionally sensitive. So I'm a very empathetic person. I, it's hard for me not to, it's hard for these not to ruin my day but try to take them with a grain of salt. I immediately delete them. Like you're in charge of your space. That is your space. There is no reason you have to leave hate comments. Absolutely no reason. I immediately delete and block. Like I don't have time for that. I don't need that energy in my life. You got this. Don't forget that you got this. I know it's overwhelming. I know this is a lot of information, but take it one step at a time. You can absolutely do this. Take off your business and become successful on TikTok. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you subscribe and learn more information like this.